since week one when he threw three interceptions against Winnipeg. Kevin Glenn, 14 touchdown passes, three interceptions. He's on fire. First down from the Hamilton 50-yard line, fit to Colbert, and I'll swing it up. The pass is not caught by Grant, as Seth Williams was there on the coverage for the Alouettes. Montreal's defense was on the field a lot last week against the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Moten Hopkins, typically a run stopper for the for the Owls, and simply they're doing it really well. Best run team defense in the league. Chip Cox, boy, it's, he's worth the price of admission. Come out, folks, and watch this guy play from week to week. He's amazing. One of the best cover guys in the league. Dwight Anderson looking to rebound from a tough week last week. Second down, Glenn steps up. Oh, up top. was there on the coverage, and Hamilton will be forced to punt. Yeah, Chip Cox is underneath this pattern here, and he's got his back to when the ball arrives to Stalla, and he plays it, knocks it out, but you'll see him here. This is, he's so valuable. He's inside, he's inside, and he's, he, he kind of gets picked and rubbed. That's why he's got his back to the ball, but he plays it, never gives up on a play, and knocks it out of Stalla's hand. Finding a way to make it happen, Chip Cox. Medlock with a short punt that bounces in the field of play. Diamond Ferry comes up, grabs it, flags her down. It'll be no yards against the Tie Cats. A 32 yard punt for turn of two. Sharp at Safeway in place. I think we agree to that, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. I also feel that today we not only got to see it, but we got to feel it. Right. We got to feel it in our discipline, and we got to feel it in the details of our focus. All week long, you guys have said what? We got to have it. Gotta have gotta it. Have we got to have it. it. We're going to do it. We got to do it one play at a time. We got to do it together. And after that play is over, we got to move on to the next. Yes, Clear minded and focused. Agreed? Yes, Let's take an eagle in the day. Last week, a lot of things uncharacteristic of the Alouettes, most notably 14 penalties for 151 yards. Tycats were penalized there for no yards, a five yard infraction. Hamilton didn't take a penalty last week until there were four and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter. Here's Brandon Whitaker's first carry of the game. Whitaker slices off tackle, gets out to the 39 yard line, a pickup of about seven. Premier back in the league right now. Brandon Two-Way Whitaker making it happen both on the ground and in the air. Fouls his big backs, pulling around, big lineman pulling around the corner. You got Brodeur leading the way. Get him touches, he will make it happen, Gord. Three 100-yard games so far this year. Leads the Canadian Football League in rushing yards. But Avon Colbert isn't far behind. Back, 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 back. Second and short. The catch is made and the run is made. And Jamel Richardson gets out of bounds at the Hamilton 53 yard line. And it's a first down for the Alouettes on a pickup of 14 yards for the big man. Yeah, it's a little wrinkle there. Really nice job by this football team. Right here, you're going to see him come in motion right in front of AC. AC's going to point fake to Whitaker, pull it out here. Man in his face. He knows what to do. Just get it to 18. Let him make things happen. There's a the point fake. Man in your face, TV bags. Not there soon enough. Jamel Richardson getting those yak yards. Richardson, who leads the CFL in receiving yards. Picks up an Alouette first down. Back to the ground is Whitaker. Brandon Whitaker wrapped up quickly by Eddie Steele after a pickup of about four yards. Who did he ever get off last week? 199 yards through the air. Like AC's lone target, like they were playing pitch and catch. It's almost like the Hamilton Tire Cat defense said, okay, you guys have a great day together. We're going to shut you down and keep you out of the end zone. It's exactly what they did, but he was on fire, almost 200 yards received. What did he say after the game? It was 200 oh, yards. He watched the tape and said he got some bad spots. Ah. <laughs> there's hey, some early movement. You know, you know what else they got, Gord? What was that big L for a lackluster performance? And well, a loss. Interesting enough, the Tie Cats have won the last three meetings Procedure. between these Montreal two teams. 59. Going back to last year, they've outscored the Alouettes 
118 to 50, but all those three wins have been in Hamilton. Marcel Belfay knows that if his team is good, it'll win here in Montreal. Absolutely. His team's got a little more bounce in their step this year, a little confidence. I believe that really stems from the addition of Avon Colburn over there, what he's been able to do for them in the confidence fact. Now a second and long situation. Calvillo throws underneath, and he and Whitaker got their wires crossed. It'll be a punting situation for Montreal. Second and long in the, in the Canadian Football League, it's much like, you know, third and long in the National Football League. And, you know, you really, it's advantage defense. And there, Hamilton was basically in Montreal's playbook, had everybody covered down, playing the underneath things, and, and, and really sh shut him down. And, and you don't want to find yourself in that situation too often as a quarterback. You saw Marcus Thickpen back to receive the punt. Last year, after 10 weeks of the season, there had been 12 kicks returned for touchdowns. This year, there have been only three. And White aiming for the corner. Oh, it's down around the seven. And still rolling. It's fielded by Hamilton's David Highland, a 42-yard punt. There are some flags down for no yards. There's Avon Coburn, rushed for 102 yards against Montreal last week. The first back this year to get him for 100. Double tight score. See that? From the shotgun, Kevin Glenn throws underneath. Uh, the catch is made at about the 33-yard line by Maurice Mann. And Yvonne Coburn, the former Alouette, had the big week last week, and again, thought it was more. He said it felt like 150 yards rushing. Well, they were big yards, you know, 102 yards on the best rush defense in the league. Really nice job of Hamilton controlling the line of scrimmage right there in that touchdown play. They went double tights. Start this drive off, they went double tights. We see it again here. This is the game plan that the Hamilton team won. Second and short. Back to the ground goes Coburn, but he runs into a wall of Montreal Alouettes led by Ramon Guzman playing middle linebacker in place of Shea Emery, who remains out with a concussion for the Alouettes. One of five offensive starters missing from this Alouette defense. Yeah, you got Bowman, you got Cox, you got Ramon Guzman, you got Anwar Stewart. They're all in on this play. They say, no, sir, not happening here. Take that double tights back to the locker room and get rid of it. We're shutting you down. Bang, stepping up in the hole. Ramon Guzman showing me what a middle linebacker is all about. And lost to punt. A low driving kick taken by Floyd. And flags are down as Floyd caught that in the air. He goes down to the 50-yard line, but that'll be a 15-yard no yards penalty. A 37-yard kick, a return of four, but the Alouettes should have good field position. Last week, Gordon, the Hamilton Tiger Cats, only two penalties for 10 yards, and, uh, you know, they, they, they can't afford to give up that field position like that 15-yard chunk to the Alouettes. No yards. Hamilton, number 14. 15-yard penalty, first down. Oh, Smith was the man in ahead of the play. We mentioned that the Tiger Cats did not take a penalty last week until there were four and a half minutes left in the football game. So the Alouettes will now start at the Hamilton 48-yard line. 141-yard differential in penalty yards last week. That is up and down the field time and a half. That's unheard of. And a play fake to Whitaker. Calvillo wanted to go deep, and we're now going underneath. Oh, Watkins makes the catch. Out of bounds by Marcel Young after a gain of 17 yards and another Montreal first down. Kerry Watkins has been used sparingly this year, Matt, but he's been a big part of the first half for the Alouettes. He certainly has, Gord, and, uh, you know, he's coming in motion. It's a nice job of the offensive line. Well, interestingly enough, Montreal's running double tights in their offensive scheme early on in this football game. Running against Marcel Young and just beats him on a little crossing pattern. AC finds him with a nice strike. And a play fake, and again, and here they go. The top is Whitaker. Brent Whitaker's got a first down to the tie cat 16 yard line. Marquise Nolton there to make the stop, a pickup of 16 yards. 
Yeah, and Whitaker is just going to come in motion like we saw Jamel Richardson did last series. He's going to point fake, and he's going to find him in the flat. That's going to work. Pull a point fake to Bratton. Give it to him. And that's a scary sight defensively to see Brandon Two-Way Whitaker in open field. Really got to break down. And right there, Carlos Thomas has a hard time. Good thing he had some help in the back end. And Whitaker now at 1,000 yards from scrimmage this season. Calvillo on first down, looks to the end zone, has a man incomplete looking for Richardson. And there on the coverage was Carlos Thomas for the tie cap. Yeah, this is a pretty much easy pitch and catch, and you're going to see him here. He's just going to run to the corner. AC's going to try to lift it and just a little overthrow. I'm not sure if that wind pushed the ball a little bit, but certainly got a chance here. It's decent coverage by Carlos Thomas, who's really stepped up this year. I'll tell you, Corey Chambliss likes his defensive secondary, having met the challenge of this Montreal receiving court. On second down, here comes the blitz. Calvillo goes to the end zone, has a man, touchdown! Brandon London with his first career CFL touchdown catch. And the Alouettes add to their lead. Another blown coverage scored by the Hamilton Tiger Cats. AC didn't see the first one, Brian Bratton, but he sees this one. That's easy pitch and catch. And there's a football that's going out of circulation. <laughs> you got that right. Brandon London, first man out of the little cluster formation, just runs on top. AC finds him, and they're in the end zone for the first time in a long time. Before. White puts the point after up and through, and the Alouettes have the lead by eight. Brandon London goes back on special teams for the Alouettes, signed last October. Played one game last season, but uh, has been a big part of the offense so far this year. Call it what you want, cluster, bunch, but this is a blown coverage. You got Brandon London right here, just gonna run right down the seam, and your two deep defenders, Jason Shivers and Carlos Thomas, are gonna get caught looking at Jamel Richardson underneath. Easy pitch and catch. AC's one or two for blown coverages and taking advantage of it here in the first quarter. And as a youngster, he's got to go out and play teams. <laughs> Richardson and Green aren't playing special Welcome teams. Welcome to the CFL. That's right. Congratulations on your first touchdown catch in your CFL career. Now get out there and tackle somebody. White sends a low driving kick to Thigpen at the 12-yard line. And here comes Marcus Thigpen. Beats the first way to the 23-yard line. And that's where the tie cats will start. Brandon London kind of fell on him right there on the tackle, too, so he, he follows orders pretty good. You know, you got to be in serious condition to play in this game, the three down football in Canada. And Brandon London's showing you why. You know, you go down there on offensive drive, you're stretching it, you're running back to the huddle, getting back out to your position. You score a touchdown, run to the sidelines, grab you a drink, get a little pat in the back, now get out there and cover somebody. Running down another 40 yards, making a tackle. Way back on first down, Glenn over the middle, incomplete. Maurice Mann got a hand on it, and then it was almost intercepted by Mark Brouillet, who comes into the lineup for the Alouettes playing safety. Yeah, and what I was watching is not so much Mo Mann, but you had Chris Williams uh, on Dwight Anderson, and he had a step on him. He maybe he's made right there, a little over the top. Just missed. That's what Kevin Glenn wants to have and needs to have here early to set it, settle his offense down. Tom Katz once again in an early hole against Montreal. Climbed out of it last week, outscoring the Alouettes 34 to 3 at one stretch. Glenn can't find anyone, now dumps it underneath. Coburn couldn't make the catch. In the meantime, John Bowman unloaded on Kevin Glenn. This is what's called the epitome of having a hot kitchen as a quarterback and there's plenty of heat in kevin glenn's kitchen a kitchen that he moves here he moves the pocket i love the thought process process for kahari jones offensive quarter and moving the pocket not letting those alouettes get a beat on him but kevin glenn feels the heat got to get rid of the football before he wants to third punt for medlock this is perry floyd from the 35 yard line Floyd gets spun around 
and works his way out to about the 40. As Mark Beswick was there to make the stop, what's going on on the sidelines? And Michael Whalen. Well, as you go as know, yesterday there was a march in Montreal in honor of Tony Proudfoot and to raise awareness of ALS, the disease that eventually took his life. And there were over uh, a thousand people. It was the best turnout on hand for, for the occasion. Um, there were eight or ten Alouette players who were participating in the march as well, as well as Tony's family. And they raised for over $145,000 for ALS research. And the Tony Proudfoot legacy lives on here in Montreal. First down, this is Whitaker bouncing outside. Got away from Stevie Banks and gets up to the 50-yard line before he was finally corralled there by Hamilton's Ray Williams. I'm going to show you just how fast you have to be to play in this league, not only from the running back's perspective, but from the middle linebacker's perspective. Whitaker stretching it, stretching it, stretching it, finally that crease. Ray Williams tracks him down from his middle linebacker spot. So got to be able to run step for step with these backs here in the CFL. Covers 65 yards with the field. Ray Williams showing you how to get her done. Brandon Whitaker, by the way, you yep. mentioned how busy he is, has not fumbled the football yet this year. Oh, no, of course, he just didn't do that, did he? Here he comes again, and Whitaker slices close to midfield. He's got enough for Montreal first down. You're setting him up, brother. I, I, I don't want to see him put the ball on the ground today. Otherwise, I'm coming right to you. Yeah, that's, that's dominating. You know, so far, I think in this first quarter, that that Montreal offensive line's done a nice job establishing the line of scrimmage, really flipping the table from last week's performance, where the time of possession was not in their favor. So far, they're controlling what's going on up front. It's a good sign for their offense. First down, Calvillo steps up. Green's got the catch down to the Hamilton 44-yard line. That's another first down and a pickup of 12. Tremendous chess match going on here from the first two times out, particularly from last time.